Hey guys, welcome to Mikey's Video Game Madness. Today we're playing Resident Evil 3 on the PlayStation 1. So, um, yeah, this is the third entry in the Resident Evil series. This is kind of a prequel. It takes place in between Resident Evil 1 and Resident Evil 2. And I believe towards the end, it's been a long time, I think that it takes a little bit after Resident Evil 2. So, um, you'll see familiar places in this game. Um, so, this is more of a side story to me than an actual sequel. We're playing on easy mode because um, hard mode actually requires you to make your own ammo and stuff like that. And I just think that for a video, it's just easier to play on easy mode. Because ADD is a bitch, what can I say? It's easier for me to record, but, you know, it's there. I actually prefer the game, it's more relaxed on easy mode, although I wish there was an in-between mode, because I think it, in some ways it makes the game a little bit too easy, because you have, like, copious amounts of extra ammunition and health items. But, um, in hard mode, you scavenge, but it, it makes it one of the hardest Resident Evil games. I think between, I don't know, I think the hardest Resident Evil games of all time would probably be, um, probably Resident Evil Zero is probably the hardest in my opinion, um, and then a tie between this and Code Veronica. Code Veronica has its ups and downs. It has some hard parts, but if you play this on the hard mode, it's it's really difficult. And also, if you get the director's cut and play the hard mode on that, that's pretty difficult. And the reason why, I mean, all the Resident Evil games are going to be hard if you play it on the hard mode, but the reason why I said the director's cut, because the director's cut is actually different. All the puzzles are different, and some of the backgrounds are different. Even the outfits of the characters are different. But we're talking about Resident Evil 3. This is one of the nicer cutscenes. Um, really, what happened is that this game came out towards um, the announcement of the PlayStation 2. So Capcom kind of knew that it was going to have more powerful hardware to work on. Ironically, Capcom during the PlayStation 2 generation started to cater towards the um, GameCube more, which got like all the Resident Evils. Well, they didn't get the first Resident Evil in its original form. They got the director's cut, Resident Evil 0, Resident Evil 4, then Resident Evil 2, 3, and I believe they got Code Veronica. And then eventually, um, there were some offshoot games on PlayStation 2. I don't know if you noticed the elevator scene, but it was hearkening back to Dawn of the Dead. At least it thinks, I think it was. There's so much going on, and there's so much I want to tell you at the same time. I'm probably going to run out of shit to say towards the end of the video, more than likely. But, um, yeah, so, um, yeah, rip. Resident Evil on PlayStation 2 got like the the gun survivor games, well the sequels to them. I think one was Code Veronica, and then there was this weird third person one. I think it, it might have been called Gun Survivor 2 or something. Or that might have been the Code Veronica. One was like Code Veronica was based on the arcade game. They weren't very popular. I haven't personally played them, but I I don't really care to, to be honest with you. I, I'm kind of a stickler to the main series. They also had the online focused Resident Evil Outbreak games on the PlayStation 2, which I wasn't a horrible fan of. There was two of them. And that game was just, I don't know, some people really like it, but I just felt like it wasn't as focused and it was kind of a clusterfuck where you really didn't know what was going on. You couldn't really talk directly to the people if you played online. Not a lot of people had a broadband connection at the time of its release, so it really didn't make a lot of sense at the time to make an online Resident Evil game. Maybe it would have been better for the PC. 
Um, the graphics are a lot better on this as you can see versus the first Resident Evil and Resident Evil 2. They were able to give the guy kind of a more rounded look and Jill has kind of more rounded curves even though it might be hard to tell but the models are higher in polygon can't count. I can't exactly say the same about the zombies but at that sacrifice of the zombies detail they're able to fit more zombies at the same time but eventually playstation 2 got resident evil 4 i wish they would uh and they also got code veronica x which had some updates to it that had like extra portions and stuff so i'm looking for subtitles whatever but i'm going to still run my mouth but um yeah, like, so, anyway, they did get Code Veronica X, but eventually, um, Capcom, I guess, realized how popular PlayStation 2 was, and they eventually ported, um, did I say, yeah, no, I'm on the right track, I had to back up, because I was talking so fast, man, I'm trying to get this channel popular, and I'm just fucking it up with my speech, aren't I, but, um, anyway, um, yeah, so eventually they ported the PlayStation, they ported Resident Evil 4 on the PlayStation 2, but it wasn't just a port, although the GameCube version does look better, in my opinion, although I think it's more of a factual thing, but it did have widescreen support, and it also had the Ada Wong files where you actually could play as Ada Wong, which is a character I actually really like, and I'm really glad that they included her in Resident Evil 6. It was one of my favorite missions, because she's like an anti-hero, femme fatale, like she kind of works for the bad guys, but helps out the good guys at the same time, so you never quite know what side she leans on, and you get kind of an insider source, and that was really cool that they added that. Eventually, when they re-released the shit again on the Wii, um, they added the Ada Wong files, but the GameCube never got the Ada Wong missions on Resident Evil 4, even though that's technically the better looking game. Although, um, progressive scan and widescreen helps out, um, the PlayStation 2 version a lot, and then they eventually re-released the games again on HD on the PlayStation 3 and Xbox 360, which I've recorded in the past. It looks nice. It looks like a clearer version of the GameCube or Wii versions with all the extra accoutrement, so I guess it would look like a higher-end Wii version, but it was really just nothing at its special beside a resolution upgrade which is great um a lot of people regard resident evil 4 as the best one in the series but um there was a few things that this game added first of all added nemesis who would actually stalk you and could follow you room to room before in resident evil games like if you left the room like nothing can follow you like if you were fighting a boss or something you can't leave the room or whatever but um and the older resident evils so they wouldn't have the opportunity and this kind of carried on over to other resident evils until they switched to the third person over the shoulder view which I kind of missed these ones, but I've learned to accept it and appreciate it. Like, I just finished all the missions to Resident Evil 6 finally. I mean, I finished Resident Evil 6 a long time ago when I said I, re I really like Resident Evil 6 and said that it's an underrated game. I still stand by that. But I actually finished the whole thing to completion, like every single mission, and I adore it even more, and I think people should really give it a chance. Resident Evil Revelation should be coming out next month, and I'm super stoked about that. Um, so yeah, I've learned to live with it. I'm not a terribly huge fan of 4 and 5, as I enjoyed um, the originals. And I started to like 6, because 6 had the action of 4 and 5, but also had some of the more suspenseful horror elements with Leon's campaign and a little bit with Ada Wong's and I did like the nemesis like missions and um 
Jake and Sherry's campaign. And I was also thought it was cool when campaigns would cross paths. So, and there could even be other people playing like a separate campaign that doesn't really have anything to do with you. But there's actually real people playing in the background. That's cool. I've never seen anything like that before. But I'm completely off track because we're supposed to be talking about Resident Evil 3. Um, you can see the zombies are are less detailed, but since I'm playing on easy, I have access to all these super powerful weapons. And I also forgot to point out, and I did it slow so you can pause it, like when it showed you the explanations of how to make your own ammo. So that was unique. They never did that again with other Resident Evils, where you can like make your own ammo for gunpowder and mix the amp the um, gunpowder types that make special kind of bullets that's unique to this game I never saw it again at least I, I pretty much played every single Resident Evil except the weird spin-off so I, I and those are pretty much I played the first gun survivor but not the other gun games I haven't played the crappy Gaiden Resident Evil game which is super bizarre where it goes into like a RPG screen and like you have to click you have to push the button like right when this um little icon like goes over like this little spot and on this bar it's it's crazy um feel free to look it up maybe one day i'll do a video of it it's it's not a very good game i don't know what they were thinking they're like oh it adds suspense yeah i, I guess so mm -hmm. but um again so this adds like the 180 turn where before you had to like turn all the way around and it also adds um this dodge button if you push square right before you get hit sometimes jill will actually get out of the way and it also adds random scares and what I mean by random scares is the scares don't always happen like if you go and play Resident Evil no matter how many times you go past those windows in the beginning of the game the dogs are gonna jump out of the windows and break through you always know it's gonna happen this game sometimes like let's say you're like you're on like a certain area where you're used to dogs jumping out well maybe the next time you play the game crows will come out or nothing will happen and you'll walk by it 10 times and maybe the 11th time something will happen so it has random scares in it to kind of make the game fresh it also has these victims in the game that you'll hear they're hard to find um, as, as you can see there's one of them dead right there you'll hear screaming and you can actually save the people, but I, I never save them in time because I don't know the game by heart. Actually playing this game is, um, <laughs> in the beginning at least for me because I haven't played it in a long time. It's, it's a little bit um, disorienting because it looks a little bit of the same, but I like the, I think it's really cool you get to see like the different areas of Raccoon City. There's a victim right there that I could have saved, but I couldn't find them in time. And there's really no indicator where they are. You really have to just know where they are or where they're going to be. I can't remember what you get if you save them bonus-wise. Pretty sure you can save them. I think I saved somebody back in the day. I think you get something. Of course, I don't. I haven't saved anybody on this. And I believe I just walked past the map. Oh, well. We're just doing the video. But, um, yeah, so it adds that. It adds Nemesis who stalks you. It adds these, like kind of quick time events but they're not quick time events in the tr traditional sense you'll get two choices like sometimes when you come across nemesis or whatever it'll be like fight the monster or run away and you gotta pick what you're gonna do and sometimes when you say run away you can't always run away so but if you don't make a choice at all the game makes a choice for you and it usually picks the hardest um, situation if you had a choice so um yeah so it, it added a lot of unique things but it kept the pre-rendered backgrounds it recycled some of the pre-rendered backgrounds from resident evil 2 because this takes place right before resident evil 2 in the same general area um the backgrounds 
seem to be cleaned up and sharper. I don't know if it's necessarily running at a higher resolution. I just think by the time this game came out, they knew how to program the PlayStation to the max. They knew as how to get as much power as they possibly could out of it. So, um, yeah, so they released this game, kind of a spin-off. There's also another character you get to play as later on. I can't remember his name. I think he's like a mercenary or something that's like a hired gun for the city to help control everything. And if you're used to watching the movies, forget about anything that happens in the movies. The game doesn't follow the movie storyline. The only movies that are canon are the CG movies. There's a there's one of the characters from the original Resident Evil. Um, believe he was a person that flew the helicopter, but I'm not 100% sure. I really want to get that Resident Evil Archives art book, but I, I looked and it was like $90 used. I, I love Resident Evil. I love the artwork. I would pay a lot of money probably for the book more than the um, asking price used, but not $90. That's that's too much. They have archives too, but that covers the more recent games and a more interest in the classic Capcom artwork of like the original Resident Evil. So we got to combine this oil and lighter. I kind of already know what the puzzle is, kind of. I do know what the puzzle is, so I'm just going to combine it so I'm not like some super psychic genius or whatever and just already know what to do ahead of time before I even see it because that that would be pretty nuts. Unless of course I watch somebody else's video on YouTube or something but no I, I, I just know, know what to do from past playthroughs. But yeah, the backgrounds look a little nice. You always can tell when something's animated and not part of the background because it's not not um, pre-rendered. It's obviously polygonal. They fixed that in the remake of Resident Evil where they had more memory so they actually could make the backgrounds almost like videos. But the real sequel to Resident Evil 2, in my opinion, is Resident Evil Code Veronica, which made all the backgrounds and stuff polygonal, which... I don't know if they're 100% happy with because um, later on, like with the remakes, they switch back to pre-rendered backgrounds that look really good. I have a sneaking suspicion if they do the, um, and I need to re do like a video of it. I say review. I'd like to do reviews, especially now that I have like a better computer now but they take a lot of time and it's kind of overwhelming because it'd be completely like different than how I normally record videos but I, I would like to do a review at some point I, I don't know what game I would want to do and it would take a long time and a lot of thinking about how I'd go about it especially because I don't want to tell you what games to buy or what games not to buy I kind of think like um, giving a score to a game almost doesn't make sense because everybody has different tastes and like if you say one negative thing there's always going to be someone to challenge you at the end of the day it's just your opinion of your enjoyment of the game so it's kind of difficult that's why I kind of do like these loose playthroughs but at the same time I almost want to do reviews in some ways to give games credit where credits do when a lot of people are knocking down games so it's almost like I would want to do like a biased review really of games I like. I don't really want to do reviews for the fact to talk about bad games because I it's really hard for me to play a game and say that it's actually bad. There might be a game that I might not personally like but it's really hard for me to say a game's bad unless it's like physically like broken. Not physically broken but the programming's broken. Of course if a game was cracked or something physically, I guess that would technically consider it bad too. But yeah, the, the zombies look a lot less detailed and close to the quality Resident Evil um, 1. But anyway, as I was saying, I keep on getting sidetracked. Um, yeah, I think if they ever do a remake, uh, uh, another remastered 
version of the game on the PlayStation 3 or 4 or Xbox One or 360 or whatever. I don't know if the companies will still find the last-gen PS3 and 360 relevant anymore because I went to GameStop and I noticed the list is a lot smaller. Um, but yeah, obviously you can tell that's a trap because that character's polygonal, but I didn't walk on him on purpose. But um, yeah, Resident Evil Zero, which is actually a prequel to Resident Evil One, where you play as Rebecca Chambers and another dude that I can't remember the name of. I remember Rebecca Chambers because she's actually in Resident Evil One. She's part of the group that um went in first, the Stars group. I think it was. I can't. I get com dyslexic with the who's bravo team or alpha team it's whatever team went on first where you find a lot of the dead bodies in the first resident evil well anyway the game ran on the same engine so i imagine it would be easier to port that game and do a remastered version that runs on the same engine as the resident evil remake since they kind of know what to do versus trying to port like resident evil 2 or 3 to um to a remastered state and give it that kind of touch up because that would require a lot more work like um Capcom's actually doing quite well and the Resident Evil remake is actually their highest um downloadable title so I almost would think it would be crazy for them not to continue that Unless like Resident Evil Revelations 2 with its episodic content doesn't do well, but I'm waiting for the disc to come out If they're smart, they'll also release physical copies of the Resident Evil remake and if they release a copy of um, Even though I have the physical Japanese copy of PlayStation 3 Resident Evil remake, which is Biohazard but the sleeve was actually on the Resident Evil side because you could switch the sleeves either say biohazard or resident evil but the actual disc said biohazard because if they put it on both sides of the disc obviously the disc wouldn't be able to read but um if they release physical copies of the playstation 4 version i i would not hesitate to get it there's one section of bonus content that's in japanese that i can't read and i can't justify paying twenty dollars for a game i already own just to play it in 1080p so Especially since my hard drive is getting filled up and I'd hate the race and take take it on and off for that slight resolution boost. But if it was in physical form and maybe 30 bucks or something, which is around usually what a digital, a physical copy of a digital game would cost, like their Walking Dead game. So on PlayStation 4, the physical versions cost about 10 bucks more than the, um, the downloadable version which I think is fair I'm paying ten dollars for a disc and a case which is nice servers go down Sony quit supporting their systems I can still play it assuming my PlayStation still works by then but yeah I, I would get the physical version just like I like I get impatient with the telltale games and <laughs> end up buying the downloadable content and then end up buying the disc when they come out too so yeah, I I, I kind of feel like a sucker. For this. Also, another thing I didn't mention that Resident Evil 3 introduces, which I'm about to show you, is interactive environments. That barrel can explode, and it's pretty easy to tell what you can interact with because the polygonal elements stick out like a sore thumb. So yeah pretty easy to tell if something looks rough and not as smoothly textured you kind of know that you can interact with it and usually the items you pick up have a little flicker on it I think there's certain modes in Resident Evil certain Resident Evil games where you can turn the flicker off but I'm not 100% sure on that I might be thinking of another game played so many fucking games in my life it's not even funny Well, this is a cool side story as you can see there's herbs and stuff everywhere and if you notice throughout the game 
I never clicked on it because I knew what the puzzle were, was, but it's like these um ropes are soaked in oil even though I like blew up a canister right there they didn't catch on fire for some reason I had to put oil in the lighter even though that the ropes are sucked soaked in oil you think I could just use the sparks from the flint and the lighter but whatever we figured out the puzzle so we're cool I can hear the dog scraping that's why I switched to the shotgun because I knew they were going to come out Tell you what, the dogs are a lot easier to hit in this game than they are in the Resident Evil Remake. When I was trying to get that key on um, the Resident Evil Remake, I can't remember if I showed you it or I just played the game. When I got the key that, the fake key that goes into like this block so you can get the real key without setting off the booby trap it was on like one of the dogs collars when all those dogs start attacking you like I couldn't shoot them in time to um, not get hit but that might have been because I sucked but yeah they seem to be a lot easier to hit in this one they go down faster this game has like a lot of tense moments I still think this is one of the harder Resident Evil games. I think Resident Evil Zero is really hard because of the zapping system, like where you actually have to switch perspectives of another character. It also doesn't have item boxes where you have to drop the um, items that you have anywhere you can, but in a way, to me, that's easier as long as you remember where the hell you put anything or just designate a room for yourself and just drop all the shit in one room. So this is the first time you see Nemesis beside, of course, the opening up of this, the title screen and, of course, the cover art. It's called Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, so I'm, I'm sure you know Nemesis is, but this is the first time we're introduced him in the game and he's like an advanced version of the final boss in Resident Evil 1 so he's like an advanced tyrant as they would call them and he's I know he's in the movies but the movies have nothing to do with them um don't mind me I'm just playing this game just to show you what it looks like I know I'm terrible at it and he's beating the shit out of me but what are you gonna do so, you can tell me how much I suck, but you're not telling me anything I don't know, but at the same time, I'm trying to record commentary and do this video for you, but I just wanted to make sure I at least got to Nemesis before I quit, because I sort of felt like if I didn't get the Nemesis and I just quit in the middle of the puzzles, like, what would be the point? I don't think I'm going to play to the point where he's like following you or whatever this will probably be close to around where I'm gonna end it but you know if he doesn't end me first but I have so many damn health packs hopefully I'll be able to take him down I don't think the machine guns are gonna be that useful for him I, th I think it be best probably use a shotgun. So hopefully this will work better. One thing about the pre-rendered backgrounds that that are a disadvantage even though they're more detailed. I think you could pull off like decent pre-rendered backgrounds with like the PS4 and the Xbox One and of course PC, but during this time, pre render backgrounds obviously looks better than like um, than trying to make it all fully polygonal with um, PlayStation 1 capabilities, even PlayStation 2 for that matter. PlayStation 2 holds up a little bit better though, but. I don't think you really started to get decent polygonal environments until PlayStation 3 and the 360. Uh, looks like he's down for the count. Oh, I got his badge. Lucky me. So, um, 
Yeah. That looks familiar, doesn't it? And here we are. <laughs> the same reused um, assets from Resident Evil 2 because this is a side story. Nothing wrong with that. It's kind of cool to see what happens before. But thank you guys so much for watching. This is Resident Evil 3 um, on the PlayStation 1. You can get it on the PlayStation Network, GameCube. It might be on the Wii. I'm not sure. Uh, you've seen it on the Dreamcast, NPC, on, under the Platinum Edition. So, no, that's Resident Evil 2. But I'm sure there's a 3 on the PC. Thank you guys so much for watching. Feel free to like, leave comments, whatever you want to do. Thank you for your support, and feel free to subscribe if you want to. Talk to you guys later. Bye.